We present a case of an 18-year-old man who was seeking refractive surgery. The patient complained of poor vision quality and increasing difficulty performing near tasks with the two spectacles that had been prescribed by other ophthalmologists in the last two years. The patient underwent further examination with corneal tomography that revealed very steep corneas, normal anterior chamber angle, no evidence of corneal ectasia and acceptable angle alpha profiles. Optical biometry revealed very short axial lengths, compatible with nanophthalmos. The results of the calculation formulas varied wildly. We decided to perform bilateral simultaneous clear lens exchange, using a monofocal 45 diopters intraocular lens. We mark the steepest corneal meridian to use as main incision, and reduce astigmatism, and performed capsular rexis carefully to avoid a radial tear, since the anterior capsule is more elastic in young patients. Lens implant in the capsular bag was successfully accomplished. We proceeded the same way in the fellow eye. Due to the anterior capsule elasticity, during capsular axis, a radial tear was observed, and we needed the help of a 25-gauge needle to finish this step. Uneventful lens aspiration was performed. A limbic relaxing incision was made in the steepest corneal meridian to reduce astigmatism. Implantation of the IOL occurred without problems. After surgery, the anterior chamber angle was increased in both eyes, making the implant of the secondary piggyback lens, safe. We calculated the power of the cell coflex multifocal, using ray trace lens calculator. We injected viscoelastic and noticed that one of the haptics of the monofocal lens was placed in the sulcus. We repositioned the haptic in the capsular bag, and then we moved on to the implantation of the Selcoflex lens, according to instructions of Rayner. First we injected viscoelastic in the anterior chamber, and behind the iris. Then we place the injector inside the eye, and inject the lens slowly, so the leading haptic is placed behind the iris.
then we rotated the lens, so the trailing haptic is also inserted in the sulcus. We removed the viscoelastic in the anterior chamber, in front and behind the lens, and in the capsular bag, and made sure that there were no remnants of viscoelastic at the end of the surgery. We checked the centration of the lens, injected the intracameral antibiotic, and hydrated the incisions of the cornea. The fellow eye surgery was performed in the same way. After the duet surgery, the patient was extremely happy with the visual results, needing only to use near spectacles during prolonged study. Management of this patient was a real challenge for our team, since the patient could not adapt to progressive spectacles and was intolerant to contact lens. Due to his very short axial length and very high hyperopia, correction with a facic or a multifocal lens was not possible.